Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today's project is a fire red ice dye. Decide where you want the center of your spiral to be and give it a little pinch. And for this project, I'm going to use the microwave splatter guard that I got off of Amazon. And I have a link for it down below in the description box, along with everything else that I use for tie dye. And then I'm going to take my hemostat and click it down on the first click. It does not need to be over tightened. You do not want to tear a hole in the center of your shirt. And then just begin to spiral it up. And then with your opposite hand, create the pleats. Once you've gone as far as the splatter guard will let you, you need to unclick your hemostat and then hold down the center and gently wiggle it out until it becomes free. Otherwise, you're going to pull the whole center of the spiral out with you. And then just secure it with rubber bands. Or you could use kite string. It's just really a matter of preference. I prefer to work with a nice tight spiral, so I'm just going to continue to pull on the tails, tucking them into the nearest rubber band. I used a washable marker to mark up my pattern and I'm trying something different this time. Just three little thin strips of dye instead of the big chunks and I'm curious to see how it's going to turn out. Give your dye areas a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. And now it's time to add our isogons. Thank you, Scotty, for the suggestion. I think it's great. So with these particular trays, it's a good idea to let them sit out for like a minute, then they pop out really easily. And for this particular project, as I'm adding the ice, I'm realizing that the rubber bands are impeding the situation. So I'm going to do something that I never do, and I'm going to cut rubber bands. When you guys are making tie-dye, do you ever sometimes think that a project is like cursed? This one is doing that to me. I'm so unhappy with all the red that's on the white. My personality likes things to be very orderly and this is not. So I let the ice melt overnight and then I came back and checked it in the morning and there wasn't much on the back side. So I was going to try to flip it and add more dye to the back side. And completely forgot that I had cut the rubber bands and as you can see it's falling apart on me and I decided to leave this in to show you that not everything works out perfectly for me you know I'm creating tie-dye just like you guys do and sometimes you have to think on the fly and just try to make things work ultimately 
I can't. And so I just make a snap decision to just take it to the sink. It's only been batching for maybe about 16 hours. And that's really not quite enough for red, but at this point, there's really nothing I can do about it. I don't like the fact that all the dye is now smeared all over the front side, and I just feel like I've got to get it off of there right now to try to salvage the white. So this is not a perfect example of how to do tie dye, but it's the human approach. You want to use cold water to get rid of any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. And for this one, there is a lot because it's only been batching for such a short period of time. So I need to rinse it well. And then I'm going to take it to the washing machine and I do two Synthropol hot water cycles. And I do a third hot water cycle using Millsoft. And I get both of those from Dharma and there's links down below for both of them. So it's easy for you to find. And then I'm going to put it in the dryer and we'll come back and see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our fire red spiral after it's been washed and dried. And considering what it went through to get to this point, I think it still looks super cool. And out of all of the shirts, I would say this looks the most like a candy cane than any of the others. I'm not 100% certain right now today if I'm going to add it to the playlist because it may not represent what Fire Red is actually capable of because it didn't have the time to batch all the way. It's a nice color. There are some good color splits. There's some pinks and there's some oranges, but there's just not a lot of it. So I'm not sure if this is the best representation of the color. So I might make another one and just do something totally different. And note to self, don't cut your rubber bands and forget about it. And then as we get down here towards the end, like always, there's going to be the liquid swatch against the ice dye so that you can see the difference in the liquid swatch versus ice dye. And fire red is a really beautiful color and I would definitely buy this again and again and again. So what do you guys think of Fire Red? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie dyeing.